Uh, I would tell you that our players are men of great character. They have a, a very deep understanding and tremendous knowledge of the issues that are going on in all of our communities. Uh, and their commitment uh, to addressing these issues uh, is really admirable. We did not ask for that, sir. Welcome back to the World Over Live. That was NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell at a press conference earlier this week. What is going on with these NFL players and how does a lack of father figures in our society shape this story? Joining me now is former NFL offensive lineman for the Rams, Jets and Giants and now pastor and founder of the Blessings of the Father Ministries. Welcome to the program, Ed Tandy McGlasson from our Orange County studio. Thank you for being here. Great being with you, Raymond. Ed, when you hear Goodell saying that he has not asked these players to stand for the anthem, when last week he noted that it's in the rule book, what do you make of this? Is this just fear of players, owners in the NFL collapsing to the, the will of a few players? You know, it's a complicated issue. And see, the truth of the matter is that uh, probably at some point in the life of a lot of players, maybe not all that are taking a knee, is we got a huge problem in our world right now. According to Blankenshorn, who's a sociologist, 51% of the kids in our country are going to go to bed without a father in their home. You imagine the impact. See, God's, you know what's interesting to me is why did God put this identity piece into guys to give to families? Mm. I mean, if you would have given it to mom, they're always there. Mm -hmm. Moms are building relationship, but he put that inside of us guys and that you probably notice this, Raymond, in your own family with your kids, mm -hmm. your, your look and the way you speak to your kids, the way you love them, mm -hmm. I mean, really helps frame their life. And imagine your three kids that you have right now without you and their story, where would they be? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what's happening in our world. It's, it, it's everywhere. And yeah. unfortunately, and it's why I wrote the piece and. Yeah, Fox you wrote an News, open letter. You wrote an open letter about... to all these NFL players. And I want to get to the letter in a minute because I really want you to plunge into it. But before we move to that, because I do think it's connected, as you're suggesting, as a former NFL player yourself, is the field the right place to take a stand or protest against something you believe is right or wrong, even though the rule book clearly says you can't do it? Do you support these players kneeling? You know what? Um... I, I put it this way. My dad was killed in action at 400 miles an hour. He was a test pilot for the Navy. Hmm. And I remember in my day when the national anthem came up, it was a time to remember every one of those people that went before us in battle. Hmm. And I would, I would never, ever take a knee during that time. There's very appropriate places, but you got to realize a lot of these players are being used by the political pundits of the day for their purposes. And guess what happens hmm when they're no longer fat enough or strong enough or healthy enough to play, they're never going to be called again. Mm -hmm. They're being used right now. And, I, and the reason I wrote that piece yeah, tell is me about I don't the think these letter. guys maybe understand. Well, see, you know, when I played football, there was probably four out of ten guys on my team who didn't have a father in their story. And, you know, a dad, when he's present in the home, is kind of like, the, the studs in the house, right? Mm. They're the walls. They're the limitations. When a dad's speaking life and he's living a, a real a godly life out loud, those sons and those daughters, they have incredible security. Mom's like the artwork, right? She's the beauty. She's uh, the relationship glue in a family. But you remove that dad and you remove those structures, it creates this gigantic question mark in, in the heart of those sons. Mm -hmm. And so now, note that we have four out of, of six kids in our country. We have much more. According to the National Center of Fathering, there are 20 million kids wow. will go to bed right tonight in our country without a dad. Mm -hmm. How about all the dads who don't know how to be fathers? And so when these guys are playing, and the reason I wrote this letter wasn't to just jump in their grill and be political. I called them to stand up for five things in their life and their story. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking a knee, would you stand up with me? Because here's the deal. Their audience are these 20 million kids. 
These kids are not seeing these celebrities anymore as just celebrities or players with jerseys that they wear on. They, they're seeing like father figures. And so they're going to walk like them. They're going to talk like them. They're going to treat mm -hmm. girls the way they treat girls. I mean, look, look at the influences of our culture with young people today. Yeah. You can barely ever find, find a godly guy who celebrated because he walks a righteous life. Remember Tim Tebow? Yeah. I mean, he got all kinds of flack in the media. Why? <laughs> this guy loved Jesus, stood up, modeled that, was still a virgin. Can you imagine that, being a football player, being still a virgin, and he was proud of that in his life. I, I love the, the stand that he took as a player. Yeah. And so I call these guys, not to shame them, to say, hey, guys, do you realize? And, and one of the couple of things I suggested to him, number one, be the kind of man or guy that every dad in America, every mom would say, could you be like him? Treat girls in such a way that moms and dads would be comfortable if you came over to date their daughter. Yeah. I mean, are you the kind of guy that could be there? Imagine one day you having a daughter. Would you allow you to date your daughter right now? So, Ed, you're talking about a much wider you live critique. That life. You, you're really you, you're you're looking at something much wider than just the kneeling controversy, um, because it really. What you're talking about is a whole lifestyle choice, a whole um, moral view of life and your obligation in it as a role model. Do you believe these NFL players have a special responsibility, given their outsized influence, particularly in the inner city, in the so-called community that Goodell keeps talking about? And what would you suggest these men do, given that influence, particularly on young African-American and white men in these communities? You know, it's an amazing privilege to be able to play a game. They're not like Hollywood people who imitate life. Mm -hmm. They live a real life. Mm -hmm. And what, a, what an incredible uh, um, responsibility and privilege that they, they have to do this. And see, so, see, so how are you going to be a man in your story if you've never had a father to show you how to do that? That's a dilemma of the world. And, you know, there, there's a verse in the Bible that really struck me a number of years ago. And it's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we started Blessing of the Father Ministries and, and I'm doing what I'm doing. It's in the book of Lamentations, 5 verse 3 in the message translation. And it's the song of so many kids today and a lot of adults who never had a dad. And this is what it says. Orphans we are, not a father in sight and our mothers are no better than widows. Hmm. That's what they're singing out there on the street. That's what's coming out of so many protesters. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, what would be different in the world if fathers were in the place that God had designed them to be? And then celebrities, when they have that privilege, they, yeah. they understand, that, wait a minute, they're getting all this money. Couldn't you Jen, understand that what you do and how you act will affect these kids. You know, Ed... Uh, and I know this as a fact as well. A lot of these guys are doing great things mm -hmm. in the city that you never really hear about. That's true. So I, I want to understand that. that thought. Well, I, I want to encourage them to do more. I mean, some of these men who are taking knees, if you really want to help in the community, you should do what one of the, the teams that I follow, uh, the Saints, Cameron Jordan, who's a, a Saints mm -hmm. player, he made a literary stop this week. He went to schools encouraging kids to read. Many other, Drew Brees has foundation. I know many players have foundations where they try to mentor or reach out to kids. I met with uh, Matt Light, who's a former uh, Patriot this week. He's got an amazing foundation that mentors these young kids and keeps after them as they go through school, mentoring them, doing what a father would no normally do. Would you encourage players to do that sort of community outreach one-on-one -on -one, rather than taking a knee before, during the national anthem or before it? You know, that's a no-brainer, absolutely. But, you know, you've got to understand this, too. And I, my best friend in my life is the African-American football player Brian Holloway. Hmm. And I grew up with him in an all-white neighborhood. He was the only black family there. Hmm. And I watched how he had to go through stuff. So I understand some of the hurt and some of the anger and some of the stuff. I, I, not quite like they do, but I understand where they come from. And, and I, I, I think it's important for them 
to stand up and really have a conversation about the things they feel. That's that's the freedom that we have in our country to do, but not during the national anthem. Very good. Ed, I thank you so much for being here and for the good work you're doing. Um, we will stay in touch with you. If you'd like more on Ed's ministry, visit blessingsofthefather.com. <laughs>